so I'm sure people will pop on as we start going. Um, but I wanted to welcome everyone to the call tonight. I know we have a bunch of different teams on. So you go by Dr. Luigi, right? I feel like that's what everyone's been calling you, even though I'm pretty sure that's your first name. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Just checking. Yeah. And that's totally fine. And folks just call me Luigi as well. I'm not really like a formal guy. So. Okay. Doctor, so anything you like to call me is all good. Okay, so um, Luigi joined us in November. He's our vice president of nutritional products. So I know we're here to mostly talk about the bars, but he said if you have questions about psychology at the performance line, he's happy to touch on that. He's a specialist in family medicine and clinical nutrition, and he's worked at UCLA Center for Human Nutrition, um, and he's been in the direct selling industry for over 15 years. So pretty good experience in nutrition as well as sort of like our niche in nutrition, which is direct selling. So if you want to take it away and if you guys are not on mute, if you can just mute yourself, that would be great. Yeah. And like I said, Jillian, just give me the, the high sign, low sign. If, if you want to interrupt or anything, it's your, it's your show. So, and I'm just happy to be here. So hey everybody, my name is Luigi, as Jillian just said, uh, born and raised here in Los Angeles, California. I grew up about literally 20 minutes away. Well, 20 minutes on the freeway at night is different than during the day here in LA. But 20 minutes from Beach Beachbody headquarters in Los Angeles. Went to college here at UCLA. It's really close to our office in Santa Monica. The only time I left LA was when I went to medical school in New York City. I went to a place called Mount Sinai, finished my medical degree. Uh, and so I'm licensed and board certified as a family medicine doctor. And then I did an extra year in what's called clinical nutrition. And the whole point of all that stuff is this, that I've always been interested in human performance and how nutrition fits in with that. So when I was in college, I ran track and cross country. I was always super excited and interested in sports and how nutrition fits in with athletes. And I was experimenting with different supplements and how they could help me run faster. Uh, but when I became a physician, I wanted to figure out, you know, I wasn't treating pro athletes. I was really working with people with diabetes, couch potatoes who have cardiovascular disease, people who've had a heart attack and they don't want a second one, folks who have breast cancer, endometrial cancer, guys with prostate cancer. So I tried to work with people and learn nutritional interventions that would help heal them or, um, let's say, prevent something from happening. So that's really kind of my area of interest, my passion. The thing that attracted me to Beachbody, and then we'll go right into the questions on Beach Bar. Uh, about six years ago, I learned about Shakeology. I didn't know about it nine years ago when it was you know, born. Uh, but I started seeing it all over the place here in the US. And I thought, wow, I've never seen any shake with chia, flax, sacha inchi, all the stuff I really believe in as a physician. I'd never seen it done in a good tasting shake because I've seen a lot of garbage that tastes like you know, uh, cardboard. And I had never seen it done on a large scale for a, a, like a billion dollar company. So I knew Michael Neiman from 14 years ago. We used to work together. So I called him up because I'd kept in touch. And I was like, Michael, what's up with Shakeology? Who made this? It blows my mind. I've never seen anything like it. Everyone's selling cheap whey protein, soy, uh, you know, uh, wheat or corn-based proteins that are really sort of commodity products. So this was a real game changer when I saw Shakeology. Totally piqued my interest, and that's why I started watching the company. Six years later, I saw a job opening, and I jumped in here and, and joined in November 2017. So that's my background. That's where I'm from, what I've been doing, and uh, sort of what I love to do. What I find really exciting um, in, in network marketing is the fact that you as coaches, your health advocates, you are, you're very powerful in the way that you teach people nutrition. So a nurse or a physician, we talk to one person for about an hour at a time, 40 minutes, say, and that may or may not be powerful. You have the ability to talk to hundreds or even thousands of people in one day with a nutrition platform, which is really exciting. So I'll get right into the bars. Um, and Jillian, you just cut me off if we, if we need to stop. So I wanted to talk a little bit about Beach Bars, and I've got questions that you all sent me. Here are the bars. Many of you have already tried them. If you haven't, I'm very excited for when you get them. And your first question was, what was the goal in creating this bar? So I've got the cartons behind me here. Um, but I want you to think about the, these bars as snack bars. You're going to hear a lot about people saying, hey, I eat Quest bars. They're higher in protein because Quest is sort of a big selling uh, bar that many of you probably heard of. 
and they'll tell you Quest has got more protein or MetRx, Metrex has more protein. Those bars are unique. Those are sort of um, exercise bars for people who, who lift heavy or usually trying to gain mass, and those are usually for the gym rats. Those are okay bars. We're gonna kind of talk about them why ours are far superior. But think of ours as a snack bar. We, we are in the largest category there is of all bars. Snack bars are a seven billion, with a B, a seven billion dollar category, which is the reason why we wanted to play in that category. So to your first question, why launch this type of bar in this category? It's basically where all, I wanna say where all the business is, because everyone who's leaving their you know, supermarket when they're shopping with the family or people at a gas station or a convenience store, you'll always find a snack bar on the way out. And that's where a lot of revenue is generated. So we believe that we can make a better snack bar than the top competitors. So who are the top competitors? Well, we looked at Lara, Kind Bar, Cliff Bar, and RX. Now, you may have business in Canada or the UK, but these are really the big players in the US and in Canada as well. A little bit of that in England. But Lara, RX, uh, Cliff, uh, these are really massive bars in that category. And what we did was we compared our bar. We wanted to design it so it was really a better bar. So if you look calorie for calorie, our bar has more protein, more fiber, and less sugar than those four bars. Now, you don't, have to be, you, know, you don't have to take notes and write all this down unless you want to. You're going to see this in your marketing material that we're actually sending to you. You're gonna find this online for all the beach party, inf beach party information. So um, if it seems a little bit like science -y, don't worry, we've spelled it all out in graphics that you can share with your customers or new coaches that you're talking to. So I would say first, think about snack bar market, massive, $7 billion. Quest, MetRx, Metrex, those other EAS bars, much smaller categories uh, in the billions, but not as large. So we're playing in a bigger pool and we're sort of going up against the big fish and our bar is far superior to theirs, okay? So that's why we, we market it as a better bar uh, because we just know that it beats on those ingredients. And I'll talk a little bit about what ingredients factor into the protein, the sugar, uh, and the carbs and fats and things like that. Okay, so I wanted to stop there for a second, make sure I get a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So does that make sense? Seven billion, great, okay. And why it's a better bar. Now, oh, by the way, um, I'll take one of our, I love the chocolate cherry almond. The packaging is beautiful. I gotta say the creative team here did an incredible job. When you get your box of beach bars, you get it when it comes to your house, all you have to do is take a look at the top of the label, okay? Jillian uh, was joking before the call like, hey, are you eating those bars? So I've, I've already nibbled on tons of bars since I got these this week. I'm gonna finish this box this week um, because I love them. But look just right on the top of the bar. If you're opening up a bar and sampling with a customer or you coach, 150 calories, uh, 10 grams of protein, zero grams of trans fats. We have no trans fats. We're also gluten-free over here. Gluten-free, something very important to point out. And of course, we've got four grams of fiber. You won't find that much in a lot of bars, okay? So it's a good source of fiber. 150 calories is very competitive. So if you're, if you're a little bit confused, a lot of coaches come to me, there's a lot of scientific things I need to go through. You can just say, this box is awesome. You can literally go through these points right on top of the box. Keep it really simple and read those. Then you can tell them, compare those to your favorite bar, like Lara, Cliff, RX, all those. Can I ask a quick question on that? Um, so I noticed it said gluten-free, which is amazing, what, but I know that our Shakeology isn't certified gluten-free. Are they made in different places? Is that why? Yes, they are. So a lot of the, uh, uh, the pack, the pack, the pack of the co-manufacturers, they're in different places. So we take all of our Shakeology ingredients and we blend at a particular facility with the bars they're made at specific facilities that are really good in making bars. So often when you're making a food or a supplement, you want to go with people who make like, the people who make tablets do a really good job with tablets. So you want to work with them. Whereas people who make bars, we go with them. So are there particular suppliers that we work with? And yes, they will have a specific facility. They will ensure that it's gluten-free and that no other bars are, made, are being made in that facility that may have gluten. Or I should say, no other bars are being run 
on the lines when they make it, when they sort of process the bar and it goes through, we don't want to have any gluten bars uh, being run on that line. So that's, that's how we can ensure that it's gluten free. By the way, we don't do that assurance. They have to do a certification and then they have to use a third party that comes in with their white glove test to make sure, okay, everything is cool. So it's a great question because a lot of people ask about that. So great point on the, um, on the gluten. So first question was, what was the goal? Second question, please go through the specific ingredients and why they were chosen. So this is a great question as well. Um, I love talking ingredients. Now I won't go through the entire label because there's a ton of stuff, but if you just think about the, the major ingredients that go into the bar, the bar's made of protein, it's got carbohydrate, we'll, we'll call them sweeteners and fiber, and then fats. So let's just start with those three because I think that's the most important stuff. First, and we'll keep it simple, the protein is a blend of both whey protein, the similar way that we put in Recover, okay, that's, that's a dairy protein. So if any of you have any dairy allergies or you're sensitive to dairy, this may be something to consider with the bar or if you're talking to a customer who's got dairy issues, okay? So there's some dairy protein, you're gonna see whey protein crisps on the label. Now the other element is the pea protein. You'll notice pea protein crisps, and that's the plant-based protein. We blend those two together, and that gives you a complete amino acid profile. That means you're getting all the amino acids that your body cannot make, all right? And that's just so someone says, hey, does it have the essential amino acids? You can say, yes, it's a complete protein, all right? Not too important, but just want to understand, that's the protein source. Um, I'm going to talk about vegan in a second because that's come up quite a bit. The second issue is sweeteners. How do we sweeten the bar? A lot of your customers don't want sugar. They want to steer clear of sugar. So you can let them know that there's about five grams of sugar in the peanut butter chocolate, six grams of sugar, almost six, in the chocolate cherry almond. Okay, So they're, ju they're, they're just about exactly alike. The chocolate cherry almond's got a tiny bit more uh, sweetener in there um, because it's the way it bounced out in the formula. Now we use organic cane sugar. You're gonna notice a little bit of tapioca in there, like tapioca pudding, but it's tapioca, which is a, um, is a prebiotic, which actually serves as a sweetener. And we get some natural sweetening from, believe it or not, uh, the, the nuts like almond and peanuts have a little bit of sweetness to them and pomegranate and cherry that we add into the, the mixes. So you're getting a little bit of sweetness, but mostly it's from the organic cane sugar. Now the only reason I wanna mention the organic cane sugar is it's important uh, that folks understand, number one, it's organic. That means by definition, the farms that we buy that, that organic cane sugar from have no genetically modified ingredients, they don't grow any, no, no GMO crops, no corn, no genetically modified uh, beet sugar. There's no herbicides or pesticides. This is by the United States Department of Agriculture. It's their definition of organic. So because we purchase that sugar, we can guarantee that down the supply chain or up the chain, it's been really pure and really clean. That's why we like organic cane sugar. So if a customer says, hey, these bars are kind of high in sugar, you say, well, hold on. It's only five to six grams. This one's about six. This one's about five okay, of the added sugar in there, or really of the sugar, and you think about even the, the uh, chocolate cherry almond, six grams of sugar, maximum 24 calories. That's about one-fourth of a piece of fruit. So if a customer says, hey, it's a lot of sugar, say, no, it's not, 24 calories maximum, it's about one-fourth of a piece of fruit. You can put things in context. Now they may say, well, I, things that, I like uh, foods that are really low glycemic index with no sugar, and you can tell them, Great, because our beach body is certified low glycemic index, okay? And they may know it as low GI. Now, what does that mean? Foods that are low glycemic index simply mean that when you eat them, they get slowly processed and slowly metabolized, and then they slowly enter the bloodstream. As opposed to a can of soda, if I slam down a can of soda, it quickly goes into the bloodstream, and then it usually drops when insulin and hormones kind of sort of absorb it. That's a bad look. It's not a good thing for the human body. That's, what, that's how sort of diabetics deal with all these problems with their sugar. So people who are 
normal, let's say, who have no diabetes, or people who are pre-diabetic or have diabetes, are looking for foods with a low glycemic index. And that's what Shakeology is, that's what Daily Sunshine is, and guess what? Our bars are also certified low glycemic index. Now, you're not gonna see that on the label. We don't advertise this because it's not really a medical food. We don't wanna, you know, we don't want people to say, what's that mean? Why would you put that on a snack bar? Maybe weird. But if you get into a difficult sugar conversation with a customer, tell them about the low sugar, organic source, 24 calories, third of a piece of fruit, fourth of a piece of fruit, whatever, and then uh, let them know low glycemic index certified. And we're gonna have that stamped in some of your marketing material. So I'll stop there for a second, see if you have any questions. I think it's really important because we get so much pushback on questions of sugar with Shakeology and Daily Sunshine when we don't have much in there. So I know you're gonna probably hear that online with some of your, some of your customers on the bars. Okay, is that okay? Yeah, if anyone has any questions, you can, I think Luigi's cool if you guys just unmute. And Absolutely, whatever you like, or you can, uh, and, or I can check in the chat, or whatever you like. Um, I'll go through all your questions, and, then, and if you have time, um, we can open it up, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so um, let me go through, so we talked about protein, okay, so that's kind of the whey and the pea crisps. Um, we talked about the healthy, well, say the carbohydrates with the sugar, uh, small amount of sugar, and a little bit of fiber. Um, and what we can also talk about the fats. Now, this is a big question that, that someone just posted on Carl Deichler's Instagram page uh, last night. And I noticed it when I was uh, driving home and I emailed Carl and said, oh, this is a great question. It's really important we answer. A lot of people are gonna ask you about the palm oil, you know, like a palm tree, P-A-L-M. Palm oil, which is harvested from Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia. Someone asked Carl Deichler last night on his Instagram, hey, why are we using palm oil? Is it a sustainable source? You may hear this from your customers. So I'm going to quickly tell a story. I don't know if you guys have ever had chocolate hazelnut spread called Nutella. You may have seen this. It's a European food and it's really yummy. I see a lot of you smiling like, yeah, I've had some Nutella. Um, it's really good. Um, but a couple years ago, Nutella was using palm oil, which gives it a really nice texture, but they were using a source that was found to be unsustainable, which means that customers found out they were working from the bean forest, and there were all these issues. So a lot of customers boycotted Nutella, and the sales plummeted. And they had a huge problem with two issues. They were using palm oil that was sort of being uh, irresponsibly sourced, number one. Number two, they were heating up that palm oil to a super high temperature, and it was causing these byproducts that were bad for the human body. So everyone freaked out, stopped buying Nutella, no more for their kids, for their family. And everyone quickly learned they better find sustainable sources. Now, what does that mean? That simply means that when we buy our palm oil, we check with the certifying bodies, like the farmers, that they're, the, if they're taking down a palm tree, that they're planting another one. So that the rainforest is not disturbed and any animals that live in the rainforest are not disturbed. They're not no endangered species. It may, say, it's, it may sound kind of weird and out there, but this is a thing with a lot of customers and they're very concerned. So they may ask you like, hey, I saw palm oil in your beach bar, is it sustainable? You say, absolutely, and we're gonna certify that it's from a sustainable source. We know that it is, number one. And number two, there is no heating issue. We do not heat it above 200 degrees Celsius, if they should ask. Uh, and you can tell them there's no byproducts because it's not heat treated in that way, okay? So we've been hearing this from uh, other companies. We know that some of our customers and coaches ask that. Just want you to know. So we've got the protein from the whey and the pea. We've got the organic cane sugar, low glycemic index, all right? Make sure you share that. And then we've got the palm oil, which gives it a nice uh, chocolate texture. It's kind of smooth, sustainable, and not heat treated. So you can go through those three points. I would also add the wholesome ingredients like almond nut butter and almonds, peanut butter and peanuts, or excuse me, yeah, the nut butters from peanuts and the actual peanuts. Those give proteins and those also provide, they provide carbohydrates and fiber and they also provide some healthy monounsaturated fats. Those are the fats in like avocados, 
the omega nines that you hear of in olive oil. Those are really good for the body, for the heart, for the skin, and that's what we have in Beach Bar as well. Okay, so I wanted to cover the basics, the protein, the carbohydrates, fiber and sugar, and the fats, just so that you have a little bit of something that you can talk about when you're chatting with customers and you're answering those frequently asked questions that they're probably gonna ask you. Okay, so I wanna stop there for a second and see if that's okay. We don't need to get too deep with the ingredients, but that's really great stuff. On the, by the way, on the label, you'll see cherries and pomegranate and all these cool, wholesome things, but those are the major questions that we get on the ingredients, okay? And by the way, you'll find those in your FAQs as well online. Um, okay, so do you believe Beach Bar, how do you believe that uh, Beach Bar compares to other bars? So this was the point about Lara, Kind, RX and Cliff Bar. These are the four major bars in the marketplace. And we wanted to go sort of head to head and address, you know, what are the top sellers doing? And let's, and let's do a calorie for calorie uh, comparison. Now, those bars, some of them are much higher in calories, much higher in protein. But when we compared them, we went apples to apples, calorie for calorie. So that's why you're going to see, um, and you're, you're going to have some really cool graphics that show each of those bars and how our bar beats each of them on protein, fiber, and sugar. It's actually very cool. And I would challenge your customers uh, to find a bar with a low glycemic index. I don't think a lot of companies, I, I don't know of any companies that do that, that certify low GI. Are the bars okay for children? Absolutely yes, and I can attest to that. My kids are eating it up uh, in a major way. Uh, they like the peanut butter, um, and my daughter's four and a half, my son's turning three in May, Technically, in Beachbody, we always say four and up is when we recommend the products, like Daily Sunshine, the bars. But just understand, kids can use the bar. It's absolutely terrific for the entire family. So I would encourage folks, and based on the sales from the first six days, you guys are buying a ton of bars. You're clearly using them with your family, and you're clearly retailing a lot of them. So we think we've got a real hit record on our hands. So we had a lot of meetings today, like we got to make some more bars. We got to talk about making more bars because we had a huge amount of orders in the first weekend. So it was really, uh, really promising for your business. It was a great sign. Um, so how do you think uh, some of the pushback conversations a coach, oh, coach seems to be prepared to handle with the bars? So I would say the pushback conversations are what we talked about. Number one, the sugar. And we mentioned organic cane sugar and glycemic index. Number two, the palm oil, and we mentioned uh, the sustainability and the temperature. Number three, I would say the protein. A lot of people, we've already heard from coaches that say, I talk to customers, they're eating a Quest bar. Now, we know Quest is really popular. They've got some really good tasting bars. I've tried some Quest bars, but I would add Quest uses, I'm not, I'm not knocking Quest. I always say in Beachbody, we don't need to, you know, denigrate other uh, companies and say bad stuff but we got to point some stuff out quest uses because they brought up quest your customers are going to bring it up they use two massive artificial sweeteners and you're going to see it right there on the label sucralose and aspartame sucralose is that little yellow pa packet of splenda that you see in the coffee shops okay i'm not knocking it i'm just saying most of our coaches especially a lot of the moms who shop for the family do not like sucralose it used to be cool, like 10 years ago, a lot of folks are getting out of sucralose. But it's cheap, and those companies use that. Uh, and you're gonna see that in a lot of shakes that compared to, they try and go up against our shake, they're using sucralose and aspartame. It's A-S-P-A-R-T-A-M-E, which is NutraSweet, for those of you who are old enough to remember NutraSweet and diet sodas. Those two are in the Quest Bars. You can go online, check. I would say, Urge your customers to stay away from those. All of our sweeteners and all of our ingredients are no artificial colors, preservatives, sweeteners, or uh, flavor systems. Really important to highlight that because they're going to ask about the comparisons. So yeah, Quest has a little bit more protein than our bar, but it's loaded with those artificial sweeteners. Another thing you're going to see with a lot of bars are something called sugar alcohols. Now, that, they may not write sugar alcohol. What they're going to write is xylitol, X-Y, xylitol, or maltitol, M-A-L-T-I-T-O-L, maltitol. And those are chemically modified sugar alcohols. They used to be sort of hidden on the labels. Now, a lot of 
And it's always the moms who shop for the family. And when, when food companies see that moms are not buying these products because they don't like them anymore, that's when they wake up. So we don't put any sugar alcohols in our products. If you have a customer, check them, tell them to check the label, read the label to you. And if you hear a maltitol, a xylitol, or any sugar any ending in OL, it's a, it's a sugar alcohol. And that's not good. Those are processed. Those are artificial, okay? So understand a lot of things that they're going to say, hey, I've got more protein. Mine tastes better. It's loaded with sucralose, aspartame, something called ACE-K, which is kind of old, but people still use it, or the maltitol, xylitol, okay? Big pushback. You're probably going to hear that a lot on sweeteners, but ask them about the, um, those forms of, sugar, of sweeteners and sugar. Um, Please explain more about the palm oil. So that was, I kind of headed that one off at the pass, but sustainable. And, uh, and you can look at Carl Deichler's post, by the way, from yesterday. If you follow him on Instagram, cut and paste his post. He did a really nice job of writing up basically the legal term. And then he added something, a little bit of extra verbiage in there. I thought he did a really nice job. So if you follow Carl on Instagram, cut and paste that. And you can use that when you talk to customers. Uh, some bars have twice the protein. How do we handle that value comparison? So that's a great question. That really goes to the Quest Bar or the EAS. Uh, I don't know if Muscle Milk's got a bar out. I think um, a lot of the Metrex, you'll see a lot of these sort of big gym rat bars, which I'm not saying they're bad. They'll sort of argue we've got more protein. I can almost guarantee with 100% assurance they always put in the artificial sweeteners. So always check just because most people who work out in the gym don't care too much about the sweeteners, they're not really the purists that a lot of our coaches are. So I would urge you, if someone says, hey, my, gym, my, uh, my bar that I bought in my gym uh, has more protein, ask them about the sweetener, you will quickly find an artificial sweetener, okay? Uh, and that's an easy way. And if they're like, yeah, I like that, then you can say, cool, I don't, and that's, we don't do that in Beachbody because we don't use that in any of the products, okay? Um, not even the performance line. Okay, very important to understand that. And um, so why didn't we go nut free? This is the last year questions and we can open it up to anything you like. Really great, great question. We are, so we, had, we were asked, can we have a nut free option and a, and a dairy free option, a vegan bar? So as soon as we launched, we got these questions from coaches. So we immediately went to the research and development food scientists and we said, can you guys make a dairy free bar? So they're working on it. Okay, they're looking into it. I gotta say that. I can't guarantee they're gonna be able to make it. But the idea is that they're gonna try and figure out if they can make a dairy-free. A nut-free option is really challenging because nuts are really wonderful. They're wholesome, if, clearly if people don't have, have allergies, and they hold stuff together, and they provide a lot of good stuff. The monounsaturated fats, the protein, and some of the carbohydrates and fiber. So that's why we like nuts, because they provide a lot of wholesome ingredients but we're working on it and we're looking into it, so more to come. We won't be able to deliver any kind of a bar this year. That would be way, we would have had to have made that like nine months ago, but keep a lookout next year. I'll be sure to keep you posted, and of course, you ask for it, that's what we wanna make. We wanna make stuff that you are asking for and your customers want. So I'll shut up there for a second, see if you have any questions on that. And, um, you know, we can freestyle it or add, we can talk more about bars or anything you like, performance or Shakeology. Up to you. I think Mike had a question. Mike, do you want to unmute? I know you did earlier. Okay. Right, Mike. <laughs> I have a question. Hey, Luigi, how are you? Mike Karpinko. I've worked with corporate since like 2003 and I used to run their test groups and everything. So I've kind of been through a lot of the process and, uh, I mean, I've done it all with them. Um, one of the things I, I would love for you to touch on this because I think it's like super important um, and it's relatable. Um, I was there in the original uh, time when we made a P90X recovery formula. And, uh, you know, it, 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 Beachbody went to this phase where they wanted to change it. And, and we went through the process of like taste testing. And we went, I mean, I, I tested over 90 samples of recovery formula. Yeah, it was insane. And I think that, you know, I mean, I'm a true believer in the high quality. I'm a supplement snob too. I'm a true believer in the high quality and really happy that they brought you on board because, you know, I've done my research on you too. So I know like what you believe in, which is so refreshing. Um, 
just in general as a, as a uh, you know as a person so what i would like to know is and i think it'd be super valuable to all these people is to hear like that testing that process that like what you went through to be like like to get to this bar Totally. Instead yeah. of, hey, we just manufactured it and it came out and it's great. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, I would just love to hear that so that I could use that as part of the story to prove the quality of not only the ingredients, but the quality of the people that stand behind it. Absolutely. So, Mike, and so nice to meet. So, it's great to meet all of you, and hopefully, I can meet you all in person, uh, whether it's in Mexico next week, if anyone's there, or at Summit in Indy in June. I'm definitely going to be at both events. So, looking forward to, to hang out and, and sort of chat about how you guys run your business and how you train your coaches. So Mike, to your question, very, very important. We, we talked about this on the last couple of weeks of training calls. Think of this as a three-step process. It's really complex, as you know, Mike, but I boil it down to three steps. Number one, something that we do that's super unique that I've learned, we do what's called ingredient identification. Most companies, when they're making foods or supplements, they order, let's say, rice or sugar or, or chocolate. And they, when they order it, they just send the money to a company, it could be overseas or some other country. They receive the sugar, rice or chocolate, and they just read the specifications and they're like, yeah, it looks like chocolate, let's blend it. No way, we would never do that. What we do, we send our girls and guys to the ingredient manufacturer who's selling us the ashwagandha or the reishi mushroom or the cordyceps all these crazy exotic things that Darren and Isabel are always talking about. We send our people, we had one of our guys in Indonesia checking out the palm oil supplier last week. And I was on the phone with him. I'm like, what are you doing in Jakarta? And he's like, dude, we do the white glove test here at each of the suppliers. So a lot of people don't know that. Something that sets us apart, and the reason why we have such premium products, we send our quality people to those ingredient suppliers and we test on site. <coughs> if you want to work with a billion dollar company like Beachbody, you got to let open your doors and let us walk through your laboratory. We have to meet your people. And what we do is we look around, we make sure that they don't have any weird, like where's the water being delivered in their laboratory? Where do they process if they're growing? Uh, do they have like, you know, gasoline or like, do they have their tractors too close to their pea protein? Whatever, things like that. We check for all of that. And then we actually check the actual ingredient, like ashwagandha. So we'll check and see to make sure it's real. So that's step one. We spend, I would say, 90% of our quality assurance is done at step one, making sure that the stuff is real, the suppliers are trustworthy, ethical, they're not having kids working on the farm, crazy stuff. It's super ethical, super clean, and it's something that we need to talk more about. I did a call with Darren and Isabel two days ago to, to prepare for Summit, and this is one of the biggest stories that we want to tell. We want them shooting a video with our quality guys and girls explaining the stuff that you're talking about, Mike. So step one, 90% of this is like behind the scenes in various countries or with various suppliers, even here in the U.S. Step two is we ship all that stuff in to our co-manufacturers where we blend. So whether it's a bar or a bag of Shakeology, this is the cool stuff. When we bring in the rice protein, the chia, flax, the sugar, whatever it is, we test it again 60 times per batch. Now this is like a really good thing in the industry. We check each of the ingredients. We take batch samples, 60 tests to make sure that it, they didn't put anything weird in there like sawdust or you know who knows, some kind of baking soda filler just to say, oh, they bought this stuff, now let's fill it up. No way, we test again when it arrives in the manufacturing facility 60 times for each, each, uh, each batch. Then here's the crazy thing and that's cool, when we blend everything together or when we make the bar, we have to take batch samples of all the products and we test 300 times per batch. I'll say it again, we test 300 times per, per batch. That's not very commonly done in the industry. That's why we're so high quality and that's why we have such high confidence in um, the purity of the product. So it's step one, two, and three. And then just to tie up Mike, if you're using a performance product like Recover, we do a fourth level of testing, which is the banned substances. Make sure there are no banned substances, drugs, amphetamines. If you're working with an athlete, they can't have certain things. They have to ensure that if they're a pro or collegiate athlete, 
it's test that fourth stage. So after we do the three stages for all the regular products, it gets shipped to you direct at your house, and you have the assurance that there have literally been thousands of tests individually done. Um, so we're going to have a lot more. We're going to try and shoot a video on this with Darren, Isabel, and some of the quality folks, making this really easy to understand, maybe doing it on site. And we think this is going to blow our competitors sort of out of the water because no one does this in the, in the industry. Quite frankly, people can't afford to do this. And this is where a lot of the, the confidence is put. So sorry I went on there for a long haul, but it's a, it's a three-step process that we boil it down to to keep it easy. Okay, that was awesome. Um, Heather just asked, I read in the past, and I you talked a little bit about palm oil, I, but she said, I read in the past how palm oil can increase LDL. I assume that she's talking about cholesterol. Would you be able to touch base on that? Yes, absolutely. Great question. So, so you have to consider palm oil is a blend. It's got a little bit of saturated fat. So on your label, if you're checking the fats, you may say, hey, there's two grams of saturated fat on there. Where's that coming from? And isn't saturated fat bad? It's not bad as long as you're balancing it with monounsaturated, polyunsaturated. Saturated fat simply means, like butter, um, that it's solid at room temperature. It sits in a solid form at room temperature. Whereas, let's say, an oil, um, like, a, uh, like a fish oil, would be an unsaturated fat. It's highly unstable and very sort of liquid. Um, so the, those would be kind of two different forms. But the point is that, excuse me, if you see the, the saturated, unsaturated, uh, and monounsaturated, those blends all are in palm oil. So palm has little components of all those. And that's why it gives such a great texture for the bar, but it's not going to increase cholesterol levels um, as long as it's in the right balance. And this, so, so no issues with LDL cholesterol. This is not going to promote any cholesterol. Now, if someone is just taking a saturated fat, let's say from, you know, let's say uh, from an animal source, and they're just eating a ton of that, yeah, that would increase their cholesterol levels. But if they're having a small amount and it's balanced, there's no issues. So a lot of doctors now look, if they're, or nutritionists, they'll look for how much saturated, unsaturated, uh, and uh, monounsaturated you're having in the diet. So they look at the balance and it, it doesn't, it's basically a wash when you have them together, which is a good thing. So you have a little bit of everything. So not a problem. Does anyone else have anything else? Guys, we have the man. He said he can talk about Shakeology too. So if you have any questions, he knows all about all nutritional products. Performance line, you said, right, as well? Uh, why don't I tell in fact, I can do a quickie thing on performance just because you guys are selling so much uh, Energize and Recover from 80 Day Obsession. But we found out even before 80 Day, 80 Day Obsession, it was a popular uh, product. Let me get my Recover back here and let me get some Energize. Okay. And I'll take Recharge as well. All right. So these are really hot sellers. Now, the reason why I wanted to highlight these two, if you're a coach and you're building a home business, these two products are your highest retention products from a customer angle. I didn't know this till about a couple months ago when someone showed me data. So that means if you're a new coach and you've got a couple customers, you're going to notice that your customers will stay on Energize the longest, almost of just about all the performance products far and away. This is like the hit record. Um, and there's a couple reasons why we're going to talk about. But just from a business standpoint, this is an amazing product to retail. Clearly, we all like taking it, provides energy. But why is this such a high retention? Why are we seeing customers stay on this product and it sells itself? A couple reasons. Number one, natural caffeine. It's got a natural caffeine source from green tea and coffee bean extract, or I should say coffee bean. Um, and so they extract those from the green tea and the coffee bean. Natural caffeine, it's not synthetic. So you're going to see a lot of companies with energy drinks, um, even some other uh, blends that use in soft drinks where they're using synthetic caffeine or other weird sources. Natural caffeine, number one. That's why you feel energized. Number two, the beta alanine. Not important to memorize, but a lot of people tell you they get a tingle when they drink their Energize. They get a weird skin tingle or like a little buzzing in the body. That's totally normal because that's from the beta alanine, which actually buffers the lactic acid in your body. 
What does that mean? It means when you're doing 80 day obsession and Autumn's like, come on, give me 10 more. And you're on number six and you're already starting to fatigue. Energize buffers the lactic acid that, that promotes fatigue. So when you lower that lactic acid, you go six, seven, eight, nine, and you can do 10 reps. That's why by law, we're allowed to say improves intense exercise performance and improves energy and endurance. That's a legal claim we can make because of the caffeine and beta alanine. So this is a major reason why your customers love this product and it has the highest retention. The last thing I would mention from a physician standpoint, and I've been using supplements for a long, long time, magnesium citrate is one of my favorite supplements. It's really hard to find, almost like a citric acid of magnesium. We use magnesium citrate in the blend. You're going to see it right there on the label. It's a very premium blend of magnesium. Very few nutrition companies use that. It's a big sign that we're using premium ingredients, and it helps to uh, reduce muscle cramping, relaxes the body. It does 300 different reactions in the human body, but some companies put in really cheap magnesium. We put in magnesium citrate, just a touch, but it's a really good sign when you're talking to a customer. So I would say natural forms of caffeine, beta alanine for that, that that tingle that people feel buffers the lactic acid and the magnesium citrate just a little touch but it's a sign we're using premium ingredients and people know if they if they know their blends okay so that's energized and i wanted to mention recover and recharge second highest retention of your performance products blows stuff away that means your customers start on it and they stay on it really impressive now recover sells a little bit better than recharge we love them both but recover, we position this as immediately after your workout. If you're doing your favorite Shanti or you're doing Pyo, even three-week yoga retreat, whatever you're doing, uh, but especially 80-day obsession, you can take your recover right afterwards because it's a fast-acting whey protein. It's a, it's a blend of whey, pea protein, and something called micellar casein. Not important. Just understand that gets into the muscle quickly. Recharge, we position this. You take it at night. It has the micellar casein, you'll see it right on the label, micellar casein right on the back, and that micellar casein slowly gets absorbed into the muscle tissue when you're sleeping. So I always give the analogy, and I'm gonna stop. Um, if I broke a hole in this wall behind me, I would try and patch it up real quickly for the aesthetic, so make sure like I put some, cover it up and, and fix and patch it. That's what your whey protein does immediately. It's a quick fix, it starts working on the muscle damage, when you exercise, because every time you do a workout, you damage your muscle tissue. That's exactly what exercise is, You're damaging muscle fibers, and then you repair them. Now, when you go to sleep, someone, some carpenter is gonna go behind the wall and put some new wood, some new drywall, hammer some, make sure it's reinforced. That's what your recharge is doing. It's slowly and gradually strengthening the muscle tissue while you sleep, so you get this double fast and gradual slow uh, sort of double punch with whey uh, and the pea and the micellar casein. So I want to talk about energize, highest retention, recover, second highest retention, and of course recharge, which is a little bit lower but really strong. So those are the three super strong products. And those are the highest retention of any, like more than Shakeology higher retention or just in the performance line? For, for the performance line, yeah. We, don't, we usually don't compare them to Shakeology because a lot of folks are on Shakeology HD for a long time. Yeah. But what we're going to try and do is start to look at the difference between the Shakeology, people who are on Shakeology HD and let's say the performance HD products and what, which ones they're using. We noticed that uh, clearly 80 Day Obsession really spiked energize and recover and a little bit of recharge um, but we noticed that those are really easy you know with that spike people stayed on them and that retention was very high so uh, but we'll check into the the Shakeology we'd love to check those numbers and compare them because a lot of you are business owners and you want to know so someone else asked before we move on there's a lot of questions but someone asked about the NSF to IS on the performance line while we're talking about the performance line Great question. Yes, yeah, so here on, this is an old uh, label that says NSF, okay? And NSF is a great company uh, based in Michigan, American company, and they're terrific because they certify all hygiene products. In fact, if you're at home and you open up your dishwasher, 
um, or and you check for certification, you're probably going to see an NSF label inside your dishwasher because they certify like everything. If you go to a restaurant and you use the hand dryer, you're going to see you know the, the air dryer. It'll say NSF certified. So they're really good at certifying hygiene, like making sure that things are clean, no banned substances. That's part of their a wing of their business. So they've been really good for many years. Now, uh, Informed Sport is a, is a British company which has grown internationally, but they started in, in the United Kingdom, and they've become highly competitive and just as good, if not better, than NSF. And the reason why we switch to them is because they test all of the same banned substances. So let's just say you guys are sponsoring a professional athlete, like a minor league baseball player, and you're maybe you know you're working with that baseball player. And they're like, hey, I love my recover. I got to make sure that there's nothing illegal in here so that when I get drug tested, I have to have 100% assurance. You can say, no problem. NSF does a very good job, but Informed Sport, quite honestly, is doing a better job now, which is why we wanted to switch. And here's why. Number one, they're internationally recognized. So if you have business in the US, Canada, or if you've got even business in the UK, everyone knows Informed Sport. Now, American sports teams, uh, Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, they are now really well, um, informed sport is really well recognized by them, where it used to be just NSF. Now they love informed sport because they're so good. And here's one of the coolest things. If you all go on the informed sport website right now, you can just Google it, informed sport, certified for sports, you're going to see the Beachbody logo. We got it loaded up. That's awesome. And here's the really cool thing. When you get your products, which should be coming in this month if you're ordering your products, they're going to have an Inform Sports logo on there. You can take the batch number of your product. You'll find a batch number uh, on the back and you can, or excuse me, on the, on the bottom. And you can type in the batch number on the website. And if you have a professional coach, an athlete, even a high school player who wants to know, or a concerned mom who's got their kids in AYSO soccer, they can punch the batch number into the website, and all of that particular batch, the results of testing are right there at their fingertips. And NSF does not provide that, that service. So Informed Sport is equally great in testing, but they give results. Their customer service is amazing. And they've grown internationally, which is why as we grow internationally, we wanted to use them. So you're going to see that rolling out in your products coming soon. And test it out. Take, take your own uh, batch of Energize. Go to the Inform, uh, Sport, uh, Certified for Sports website. Type in a batch number and check and see what your batch has. It'll say, you know, of course it'll say negative for this, that, and that. But you'll know what it's tested for. And then you can talk to your customers and coaches about that. It's really cool. Okay, that was awesome. And I've been ask, wondering that too, so I'm glad someone else asked. Um, someone just asked about Shakeology saying that, I can't even pronounce this, methyl sulfamethane. Is that a sulfamethane? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. <laughs> MSM. Is okay, that a and Stevia, um, there's a root, not a rumor, I guess. So she's saying, someone's saying it can cause hel ha heart palpitations. Okay. So the C now I wonder if they're talking about the vitamin B12 or the folate. Uh, so there's methylfolate and there's methylcobalamin, or are they talking about the, um, I'm wondering which one, because we get a lot of questions on. Tier, I don't know, Tier Von Dune asset, if she can, or he, or I don't even know. Oh, let me see, is it on the, is it yeah, in the chat? Yeah, I'm just reading from the chat. Let me see if I can find it. Because one of the questions we get a lot recently, which I'm really impressed that people know, because it's kind of a medical thing, a lot of folks have asked about different forms of folate. And if you look on the bag, you're going to see um, vitamin B12 is methylcobalamin, methylfolate. And there are some folks who are finding out that they have, and it's a normal thing, it's not a big deal, but they have a genetic mutation. It's a natural genetic mutation. They probably figured it out from their doctor, and it doesn't mean anything. They have a normal lifespan, but they don't um, absorb. They don't convert folate very well. They don't. They don't have the ability to convert um, folate to the folate that's absorbed in the body, and um, and you know they just don't do well on certain types of folate that are added. So number one, 
If that's the question, which I'm not seeing here, if they're wondering, um, and the people who have this condition, the folate uh, issue, uh, I think it's the NTHR receptor gene mutation. I'll, I'll send it to you. I can email it to you, Jillian. Um, but um, so if they do have that mutation, they're asking about folate, just understand that they can use vegan Shakeology or they can use daily sunshine. We know it's for kids, but these both have the form of folate. Uh, excuse me. They have, I'm sorry, they have no folate in them. So if they're concerned with uh, actually having folate, they can, they'll, they'll know that they, they have the, uh, they're folate free. So if they're trying to steer clear of folate, they can use Shakeology Vegan or Daily Sunshine. That's number one. And number two, if they do have the gene mutation and they're concerned with having um, what's called L-methylfolate, which is the, the folate that they're going to notice on the label, they can actually drink the regular way Shakeology. So they're, they're okay. So I guess my short answer is if they have a weird gene mutation on folate, they can have all three of the bags, the whey, the vegan, and they can have the daily sunshine, okay? In terms of another, I'm looking for any other um, thing that they're concerned with. I don't see any, in terms of stevia, um, stevia doesn't, I've never heard of stevia causing issues with palpitations, um, just because it's such a small amount. The beauty of stevia is that we use a tiny amount, and it's very sweet, and it has no calories. But, um, so I've never heard that one before, but if they have any, like a paper that they want to send me or Jillian, you can sit, pass on to me, or you could just write me on Facebook. You guys, a lot of coaches just write me on Facebook, Luigi Groton. And, uh, you know, I answered like three questions today on Facebook with, for coaches. So feel free to just post something on Facebook. I'm happy to answer back. By the way, the question that um, I'm going to answer tonight that I just found out, the, uh, the Inform Sport logo is uh, compliant for people in the United States military. So a lot of our coaches, uh, we have a lot of female coaches mostly, a lot of them are married to servicemen uh, or the women themselves are in the military. And they've been asking, knowing that NSF was certified by the American military, Inform Sport is also certified by the American military. And we believe it's all divisions. So that question came up two days ago. I'm going to answer a coach tonight on Facebook about that. So just random thing. But um, the MSM thing, if they have more questions on the MSM, send it directly yeah. to <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I can, I, I, uh, I can see you and hear you. Okay. Were you going to me? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, I'm, I'm open. Any questions? Oh, I was just going to tell you, you just answered my question. Oh. <laughs> I'm the one you were going to respond to, Dave Ward. I asked oh, you the question about the oh. military and the NSF. Oh. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Oh, so perfect. Um, so I'll, I'll yeah. still, I'd still like to post it because I found out I was working with our science team at the airport yeah. office, and they literally just told me they had to call Inform Sport, and they, we talked to our rep, and they found out that they are compliant. So I'm so happy that you are the one who posted. So I'm going to write you directly, and we'll make it public. Yeah, thank you. Also, just a little funny side note today. I was following a dry cleaning truck and I saw the NSF logo on the back of it. And it's when you were talking about how, you know, they do this broad spectrum certification. That's really helpful. I think I work with a lot of cyclists. And so that community, they're very picky about everything, you know, and so and then the military, of course, as well. I live in San Diego. So anyway, well, thank you so much for the, for the answer. Great. No, and thank you for the question. Thanks for being here. You totally validate the point that <laughs> I was making. But also, more importantly, NSF, Look, they're amazing. They're huge. They're this massive organization. They're American out of Michigan. We love them. But quite honestly, um, there are a lot, a lot of companies are complaining that they're almost like this bureaucracy and they're kind of slow with the customer service because they're so big and they certify so many things. So the, the thing about Informed Sport is they're growing fast. Everyone loves their, their, um, their customer service. And remember, you can punch in batch numbers and get results and give that to an athlete directly, something we couldn't do before. Or you can give that to a service member, they can give that to their commanding officer and say, look, it's all checked out, no issues with drug testing. So they can feel really confident. And I know it's a little specific, but can I, if I can drill down now that I have you here a little bit. Um, oh. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> um, so as far as how it all relates to WADA, 
and, and ties into the various different nationalities and all their anti-doping association. We're all approved by that, right? Like if I'm talking to somebody that asked me, USADA, WADA, any of those sort of certifications, informed sports, good. Absolutely. And so for all of you on, on the Zoom call, World Anti-Doping Association, WADA. And WADA is like this massive governing body. Let's say any of you are Olympians or you got a family member who's using the products and they're training for the Olympics. WADA is like recognized as the governing body to make sure that athletes are doing what they're supposed to do. No blood doping, no amphetamines, no drugs. So WADA, as you're pointing out, sort of certifies and filters everything. Now, here's the thing. Beachbody, you know, we're in three countries right now. Let's say you're working with an athlete here who's going to be training for the like Olympics or, or the nationals team in Japan, I'm just making something up randomly. There's going to be a WADA for Asia that's different than the WADA for Europe. So generally, though, they all test for the same common banned substances, which is what Inform Sport does. And let's say Asia tests for something additional than the U.S., then usually informed sport is going to include that in their set. So we're covered for everything. So it's really comprehensive and that's why we love. And NSF does a great job too. So they're all good. We just like informed sport because they're more global. Can I ask one more question? Sorry. This is the nerd in us, like Dave, you and I. Um, and have, Luigi, like, I mean, honestly, I, I used to be really good friends with Steve Edwards and we used to just nerd out at, at events, just nerd out. So I'm sorry to you guys. Um, Steve Edwards used to be the director of results at Beachbody and uh, I, I, I mean, a foundation guy. But um, here, here's my question. And I think this might help other people because they may get this is what's the difference between the way in Shakeology and the way in Recover? And like, why is, is it different? Is it the same, uh, the way that goes in the bars? Is it just because different types of way need to go into different uh, mixtures to create products? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a different process to the bar than there is to Shakeology. To what, I was just wondering what that is, because, you know, I constantly get that question of like, it's way, and I'm like, well, is the way in Shakeology better than the way in Recover? It's a nerdy question, but um, I would love to know the answer. It's a great question. So first, I would start with the difference. And you take a glass of milk or let's say in most whey and casein. And Mike, you know, I, I work a lot with uh, clearly I never, you know, I haven't been, I don't have the opportunity to meet your, your colleague because uh, I, I, but I heard so much about him. But Denis, his buddy is like my brother. Denis and I work like, we're like, and Denis answers a lot of your questions for all of you coaches online. You, he's the guy behind uh, a lot of the questions. So you'll, you'll see D-E-N-I-S, Denis, but it looks like Dennis. Anyway, he's amazing, uh, and I know you know him really well. So um, to your question, think about a glass of milk or some cheese. Or So a lot of dairy proteins are made from um, the dairy industry where they take very light um, sort of uh, – I want to say premium blends of milk or dairy products from cheese or milk. So that's where they get them from dairy farms. And we want to ensure, because really that's where a lot of the business is done for like butter and cheese and milk. So we buy from these suppliers who get them from farmers and we try and buy from farmers who are in the U S that we know are ethical and that we trust and that they're, you know, trying to do predominantly grass fed, non GMO. So now we don't certify our way nor the casein. And you're going to see those, those things on the label way in casein. If you look on the back of way, uh, excuse me, uh, recover and recharge, not to nerd out too much, but there are different types. Casein is slow. Like we said, and whey is really fast. So when you drink a glass of milk, which is loaded with whey, that way goes right into your muscle tissue after workout very quickly. When we take the lactose out, when we take the, a lot of the fats out, we take a lot of you know, other things that are in milk uh, or cheese or whatever that byproduct is, then you get a whey protein isolate or we get a whey, basically whey isolate. That's what we use for the bars. That's what, we're, that's what we use in Recover. And those are sort of very fast acting, well absorbed, and that's why we like them. Now, casein is also sort of stripped of lactose. Uh, it's stripped of the fats. It's defatted. So it's really pure and clean. But remember, casein is just slower. As you know, Mike, it's just slower. So that's why we say the recovers fast and the recharge is slower. But in terms of the specifications, what, what, and I'll end with this, we're hearing a lot, about, a lot of questions from, uh, from coaches about 
where the milk is sourced from, where the whey is, and we don't have that visibility right now. We don't know what they did with the cows when the cows were alive. We know milk is non-genetically modified by definition, but a lot of people want to know what was the cow fed. We know that most cows are grass-fed for a long time. Then what do they give them before they, you know, they start harvesting the, the milk or rendering the meat for steaks? So that's something we're going to try and get into, but all the specifications I see far away and our casein is super clean, non-GMO, uh, they, they test for pesticides, herbicides, um, anything that, uh, that, is, that they want to make sure is not detected, hormones, there's none of that in the milk or the, the whey casein that we purchase. So it's super clean, super pure, and really uh, awesome when I've seen their specifications. Um, hopefully that helps. I definitely think it helps. I'll just say that it helps in understanding why each product is really important to our product line. Right, right. I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking at now. I'm looking at some of the uh, all the your your questions and comments, and so I, I know we were, we uh, answered a lot of those. But um, anything you guys think um, you know would be um, would be important to to answer. Like I said, you can always write me direct, or we can you know we can talk about more things. So it's, I'm all good. Does anyone have anything else? Just unmute yourself. No? Hi. Um, I had a potassium levels. Did you go yes, first? I'm sorry, said so potassium levels. <laughs> what was that? I missed that, I'm sorry. Two of us asked a question at the same time. Oh, okay, go ahead, I've got, uh, Lakahi? Lakahi? Yeah, okay, cool. Hi! Oh, Hi. <laughs> sorry. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, the, um, sorry, the recharge. I did a sample of it recently and I got really bad, like my heart started beating really crazy fast. Hi, Luigi. <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, Luigi. Hi. How old are you? I'm four. Can I show you all my hats? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Very cool. Oh. I like you sometimes. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, and I have a child who's just about your age, a little bit over four. And uh, both of my kids, whenever I'm doing a Zoom call, they love to join in too. So I know. Hey, okay, I'm gonna take them in the office. Okay, well, you're gonna try <laughs> next week when they come in. Um, my question was about the recharge, and is there anything in it that would have made my heart? palpitate like that or is that or is it some, maybe something else that I had eaten earlier yeah that's interesting so generally we don't see um, take care nice seeing you um, so generally uh, with palpitations it's usually from uh, so palpitations by the way could be very normal now clearly if you're really concerned go see your doctor absolutely we don't want to we never want to mess with the heart but palpitations uh, you know most people throughout the day don't know they're having little palpitations, it could be normal. When we exercise and we get dehydrated, we get, a, we're especially more prone to palpitations. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Number two, some folks like myself who are caffeine sensitive, I, like in medical school, I drank like gallons of caffeine. When I started practicing as a physician, I started to realize I couldn't have more than two or three cups of coffee in a day, that's enough, right? But I would get palpitations and I've realized that I'm super caffeine sensitive. So if you're having uh, energize or the focused energy, even if you're having it in the morning, you can have palpitations in the afternoon or evening just from a morning dose of caffeine. So number one, I would first try, and I love energize, I don't want anyone to stop drinking it, highest retention, great for business, amazing for your customers, but I would first stop uh, your energize or uh, cut back on your focused energy for one day and see if they stop, or two or three days, I'm guessing it's the caffeine. If you can, I don't know if you consume caffeine, but I would guess it's the caffeine in, as opposed to the recover. I can have a cup of coffee at six in the morning, go to bed with uh, my wife, and I'll be like, "Oh, I'm having some palpitations," just from one like, you know, Starbucks French roast or something. Yeah. So, but also when you were exercising in Beachbody, you get dehydrated, and as much as we think we're drinking, you know, hydrate, and we're drinking beverages throughout the day we're generally always at a loss of fluid. It's really hard uh, to, to catch up when you're doing 80 day obsession. That's why autumn and everyone's like fluid, fluid. It sucks when you gotta you know, 
get up and go to the bathroom 17 times a day, go pee. But it's so important to stay really well hydrated because that helps to prevent the palpitations. So I'd say cut the caffeine. I don't think there's anything in recharge specifically. Tart cherry doesn't have that effect. The tart cherry is what reduces inflammation. So if anything, it should cool things out. So, okay. uh, but if I can think of anything, I'll, you know, I'd post on Facebook or I can uh, send it to, to, uh, to Jillian. Thank you so much. No problem. All right. Are we good, guys? I know we're over an hour. So, Luigi, like, you were early. You stayed late. I'm super appreciative. I'm sure everyone else is. Um, I did record this. I know people kind of jumped on and off during the call because, you know, different time zones, things going on. So, um, I really, really, really appreciate it. I want to thank you for joining us and taking the time out of your day. And, Offering to talk a little bit more than just beach bars. I know that that was like our focus, but it's really nice for us to hear again, like kind of what the body really puts in to put out these super premium products for us and why, why they work. And I love that you were like, we don't have to put down other people's things. We can just talk about how awesome we are. And I love that. I totally focus on that too. So that's great. Um, so if you guys have any questions, um, you can feel free to send them to me and I could probably get them to Luigi or he said you can just message him or tag. I don't know how you want yeah, to do it. I'm on Facebook. I'm in the round table. I'm all and people tag me all the time. And, and Julian, thank you for hosting. I'm happy to do more calls throughout the year. That's our job. That's what Carl wants us doing. And I'm trying to bring some of the other scientists and specialists in to do calls as well. So, you know, you get Darren, you get Isabel, hopefully you get some of the other doctors that you haven't met who are behind the scenes on quality. And so thanks to all of you for your hard work. And I'm hoping to meet a lot of you in person at some, at some of the events. Yeah. I'm really excited for my beach bars to come this week. I hope y'all ordered like 20 packs. Cause sounds like there, you guys are, you guys are ramping up production. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll I mean, I can't give any company secrets away. Let's just say we're watching the sales every single, like every four hours. <laughs> We watch sales every four hours. We're like, whoa, this is going really well. So clearly, we think it's going to be a great product for your customers. That's what we're excited about. And new coaches. Awesome. Really. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and night, wherever time zone you're in. Thank Bye you, everybody. Guys. Take care. Thanks Bye. again, Julian. Thank you. Bye.